Hello, this is Dana Thompson speaking about how and why the city level participatory slum upgrading index was developed by UN Habitat participatory slum upgrading program. So what is the city participatory slum upgrading index? It's a self administered tool still in beta phase to support city authorities and city stakeholders to assess citywide in situ participatory slum upgrading. The tool can be used to take stock of existing slum upgrading policies, programs, and practices in the city, and we call this readiness for participatory upgrading. It can also be used to identify practical ways to increase community participation in and the success of citywide slum upgrading. Finally, it can be used to monitor levels of community participation and city readiness for slum upgrading over cities and over time. Why was the City Participatory Slum Upgrading Index developed? Well, first, it's a clear statement. It underscores and measures the important values that should be embedded in participatory upgrading programs. It's also meant to be practical. We target the interface of what the public needs and wants and what local governments or other local actors can actually provide in terms of city services. We want this to be a policy and decision support tool that can help local groups of stakeholders generate ideas about how to improve existing slum upgrading programs, policies, and practices, and prioritize further investments that might be made by local governments. And finally, as an evaluation tool to enable the actual monitoring of participation and in situ participatory upgrading within a city over time, or to be able to compare across different cities at a, a given point in time. This is the process of how the City Participatory Slum Upgrading Index was created. First, we developed a conceptual framework drawing from several types of frameworks. We drew from ecological and equity frameworks, from program evaluation frameworks, and from frameworks that define the city government systems or interactions. Then we looked at indicators in a systematic way following this empirical process. First, we compiled existing poverty and governance indicators. We generated a few missing indicators that we identified from the conceptual framework that were not showing up in existing indices. Then we scored and selected a few of these indicators that are most relevant in terms of our conceptual framework for measuring participation and readiness for participation. And finally, we brought this to an expert group meeting and received feedback on the conceptual framework, our process of indicator selection, and the specific indicators that are in the PSUI. Our conceptual framework drew first from an ecological equity framework that's used by the UN Habitat Participatory Slum Upgrading Program. It's a people-centered approach, and it has the concept of embedded risks. We also drew from the theory of change results framework that's often used for program evaluation. We use the concept of causal components that flow from implementation through to results. And finally, we draw on Janelle Plummer's manual on participatory slum upgrading practices and specifically how governments can support it. In it, it has a concept of an enabling environment, and we borrow that in our framework, and also context which shape how government and communities interact. So here is the Participatory Slum Upgrading Index conceptual framework. On the left are all the pieces that together comprise a city's readiness for participatory slum upgrading or the enabling environments that can be created for upgrading. And on the right in the pinwheel shape, you see elements of participation. So the quality and quantity of participation by communities and the degree and diversity of people who are engaged. Embedded in this participatory slum upgrading index framework are a few assumptions, so let's break those down. First, we differentiate between city readiness, community participation, and the very existence of slums. So data-driven indices almost always conflate or combine indicators from these different concepts, and we really break it out. This is where we bring in theory of change concepts. So we're looking at government and other city level inputs to participatory upgrading, vehicles for how this upgrading happens, what are the specific activities that are taking place often in the local government context, and also what are the specific outputs. All of these together really quantify what are what is the readiness for engaging with communities and having participation in upgrading. Then there's the actual participation of communities themselves. And as we said earlier, we're going to be looking at multiple aspects of community participation. 
And then still using the theory of change framework, we have outcomes and impacts of this entire upgrading process. And that is whether or not slums exist, yes or no. We also have to think about different scales. What we wanna do is look at what's happening in the city in terms of upgrading policies, programs, and practices as a whole across the whole city. So you might be asking yourself at this point, why are we not just measuring slums directly to see whether or not an upgrading program is working? Because surely if an upgrading program is working, then we'll see fewer slums. The challenge though, is that cities are not static. They're super dynamic and in migration, of newcomers off the two slum areas is often outside the control of local government. So a local government might have very effective slum upgrading programs, but there might be more people moving in faster than they can be upgraded. So just measuring the degree and distribution of existing slums at a particular time does not necessarily give us actionable information. It also can create some very perverse incentives. So participatory slum upgrading as we know, is a lengthy and super challenging process. And measuring slum prevalence alone really incentivizes short-term unsustainable and often abusive practices because the idea is that we want to just get rid of slums. But it's better to measure the participatory process itself because when participation is done well, it's bound to result in context relevant and more sustainable housing solutions for everybody in a city, not just slum dwellers, but everybody. And how do we actually measure slums accurately? At the moment, there's no widely accepted and scalable method to map slum areas and their populations in a consistent way across cities. So now I'm gonna talk about the process that we use to define indicators and select indicators. First, inputs to the process. We started by reviewing several different city data initiatives and indices, nine in particular, including the city profiling questionnaire used by the Participatory Slum Upgrading Program at UN Habitat, all of the sustainable development goals, Urban Heart, Habitat Agenda, the ISO City Standards, the Multidimensional Poverty Index, City Prosperity Index, Urban Governance Index, and the Local Government Barometer. And we also used the full manual by Janelle Plummer that she published in 2000. Um, and from that generated 18 additional indices that were described as best practices or enabling environments, et cetera. This, was, this didn't include indicators directly, but instead was text-based. So we combined all of the similar indicators across these in initiatives and went from 704 individual um, indicators down to 30 or 320 common indicators by removing duplicates. Then we linked these to our conceptual framework and in the process dropped 62 indicators that were at the national scale, so didn't fit within the city scale or subscale. And 151 indicators were outcomes describing the presence of slums or poverty and therefore didn't fit into the city readiness or, particip or participation part of our framework. In the end, we retained um, 115 indicators in these categories in our conceptual framework to ensure we didn't end up inside of an echo chamber, just recycling the same old indicators from one index project to the next. We went to the academic and gray literature and just tried to understand what are both qualitative and quantitative papers, what are measures that are working for describing um, successful, sustainable, inclusive participatory slum upgrading. And using that literature review, we we're able to bring it into a ranking system. So we scored and ranked each of the 115 indicators based on relevance to the framework, availability in terms of data. So was it from an existing secondary database um, or fragmented public data down to simple but self-reported data to, and then down finally to very difficult self-reported data um, was it available over time? And credibility is where we bring in the literature review. Does it show up in both these other indices as well as publications in the literature? And from that, we use the scores to select the highest scoring indicators in each subcomponent of the conceptual framework. And we brought this to a group of experts um, who made further recommendations. Their recommendations were to drop a few indicators that had been selected that were so similar that we didn't need both. And they also suggested bringing in a few indicators that hadn't scored the very highest, but were also very important conceptually. Six scores are created by the Participatory Slum Upgrading Index tool, in its beta version at least. 
um, a participation score and five city readiness scores. All of these scores range from zero to 100, where 100 means very good progress and zero means very poor to no progress. Here is our initial guidance to interpret those scores. This is all with caveats in that all of this will be improved with further statistical analysis of results that are um, provided back from the beta testing process. This is how we envision you using the participatory slum upgrading index, even in its beta version. So first you'll want to assemble key stakeholders and within the tool itself, within the Excel file that's linked below on our website, you will find resources to help your city assemble the right stakeholders and create an environment that's ripe for discussion. Next, you'll work together as a group of stakeholders to complete the questions that are part of the Participatory Slum Upgrading Index tool. At a minimum, we request that you complete the 18 questions that will be used to generate the participation index. This is really the main outcome of interest um, and how you're doing in terms of engaging, um, engaging community members and communities across the entire city. Optionally, there are several more questions that you can create uh, answer to generate the city readiness scores. Then you're going to go ahead and calculate those scores. If you have downloaded and are using the Excel version of the tool, all of these scores will be automatically calculated as you complete the questionnaire. If you download and use a PDF version of this questionnaire, you can submit those results and we'll calculate the scores for you. In either case, we want we're requesting that for beta users, beta testers of this tool to submit their results via the website www.c-psui.com. The reason is, is that we're compiling all of the results from the initial beta users and doing further statistical analysis to figure out which of these indicators are really important for calculating meaningful scores and which of these variables can be dropped or which of the questions can be dropped essentially, because we need to greatly simplify this tool. At the moment, there's dozens of questions and ideally we can whittle this down. The results will also be used to fine tune how the weighting works and to figure out um, better, better ranges for very good, good, fair performance, et cetera. So very important to share your initial beta questionnaire results with us, please. And perhaps the most important piece is using these scores in conversation with the stakeholders who completed the questionnaires, as well as other relevant actors in the city, and identify potential improvements that can be made to improve participation and ultimately slum upgrading across the city. So the participation score should help you to identify to what extent and how well communities across the city are already participating in slum upgrading and how well those relationships are being maintained. The five readiness scores will help you identify existing strengths and weaknesses in citywide policies, programs, and practices toward community engagement and upgrading. And you'll be able to use the scores themselves and answers to the questionnaire to identify feasible changes that might be made in your city and how those city might go about making those changes. Thank you so much for your interest in the Citywide Participatory Slum Upgrading Index. We hope that you'll find the tool useful, and we also hope that you'll feedback on your experience using this tool. Many thanks.